to Norwegians. Now, the Norwegians, when they invaded, the, you saw that you see various forms of armor, just like you saw with the uh, Saxon army. I have mail on myself. Uh, Jesse stepped forward. He has on a helmet. See, his helmet is a little bit older style helmet. Uh, not quite like the conical helmets with the nasal helms that became more prevalent during this time period. In fact, uh, the ocular helms uh, had some drawbacks to them, one being that somebody could shove a spear in your eyes in your ocular eye socket there and in fact it's, instead of being protective it became a target and would draw weapons into it but it's also very nice to note that cultures this is pan cultural that is specific to the scandinavian culture exactly and and, re and also remember these guys are the army of the by god king of norway this is a this is the army is a big deal keep going and in fact, I, I actually think the ocular helm was a little more intimidating looking. <laughs> so, gave us a little bit more of a fierce look. But you can see that uh, uh, Logan here left his armor on the ship. <laughs> and that really happened. When, when the army of Harold Hadrada faced the army of King Harold, Hadrada's army had already won one victory. And they thought they were meeting at this specific point to collect hostages from the city of York. Instead, what showed up were thousands of Huskarls. Most of the army of Hadrada had left their mail shirts on the ship because they thought they were just coming to collect hostages. Did they regret that? Yes. Heavily. <laughs> Hadrada came to England with about 300 ships. He was killed on English soil. By the way, he only lost two battles in his whole life, his first one and his last one. <laughs> but the Norwegian fleet left with some records say 20 to 25. It was a decimation of Herdrada's fleet. Absolutely. And both of these armies, the Saxon army and the Norwegian army, fight on foot. They are unparalleled infantry in the 11th century. They know horses exist. They ride them to battle, yeah, we're not but stupid. they... Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's for democracy. The horses are land ships. Uh, That's true. <laughs> so you ride to battle, dismount, and form that brutal shield wall. But let's go now to our invading army, and it's not just infantry, it's got a mixed force that Glenn can tell you oh, makes the difference. The Saxons defend, the Vikings fight, the Normans conquer. When William comes over, first of all, he has to build an entire fleet of ships to bring his forces over. Estimates vary anywhere from seven to 10,000 men that he brought. Some of those men were archers. They were not usually armored. They didn't have any other offensive weapons other than perhaps a personal knife and a bow and arrow. Um, the bow was obviously known in, in uh, Saxon, England. It was known in Scandinavia. It was used in warfare, but it was primarily also a hunting weapon. The Normans brought plenty of archers so that they could use them as a volleying mass. And can you tell them a little bit about that process? All right, so before this, you had archers really working as skirmishers. People who would fall off the shield wall, you'd have them pick them off. Really just small individual fighters. You didn't have a large mass archery unit. So the Normans got the idea to do it. Now you had two main tactics. You had the volley which is just the standard, all archers knock, aim, and release all at once, usually in an arcing fashion, taking out as many people as possible. Now, you'd have the issue where the defending force would combat this by everyone getting in the shield wall, stopping as many arrows as you can while the archers are reloading, run as far as you could, stop again, throw up the shields, and try to get to the archers. So the Normans, <coughs> compensated with this by doing firing in alt altering patterns. So me and the archers on my side would fire differently. So while I'm shooting, they're reloading. And same, alternating every other all the way down. So there's constantly arrows going down the field. This way, it keeps either that unit pinned, so your cavalry can come in and take them out, or they are going to try to charge you, and it's not going to go so well. <laughs> the Normans also brought infantry. Mr. French, that's his real name, by the way, <laughs> is, armed, is, 
is, is accoutred as a standard Norman infantryman would be. Shield, spear, hauberk, helmet. This is not a, 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 a levy of militia. Norm uh, William was putting together an army that was filled with well-equipped professionals. You don't want, if you only have a limited number of ships, you want to make sure every person you take over is going to be a maximum effort soldier. So the infantry looks like this, but they did fight on foot. Right, David? Absolutely right. And it's funny that you bring that up, Glenn. Um, my name is French, and you know, I tell people, I say, my name is French. They say, yeah, but, but what is it? As in, oh, they think it's De Beau or something. Like that. <laughs> um, literally no, French. That, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but no, that, that's an important thing. Something very, very interesting happened to our language right at this time. Of course, we don't speak the same English that the Anglo-Saxons. For instance, spoke. they speak a language that sounds like this. So who caught that? <laughs> that's, that's English that's old as English. it was spoken a thousand years that's ago. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Shakespeare prayer. didn't write in Old English. Don't think that. He didn't. He wrote in modern English. That was the Lord's Prayer in Old English. And, and so some very important changes happened to our language. French was actually the official language of England from 1066 to 1363. Okay, that's a huge period. Now, the commoners weren't speaking French. The nobility, the, the kings, the, the court, all that, they were speaking French. But it sort of um, trickled down society. You ever wonder why we have two words for uh, like a pig, right? You have pork, right? Okay, then you have... Um, and you have pig. pig. Yeah, pig, right? You have two words. Why is that? Pork is the French word, okay? Once it was cooked and prepared and ready to be digested, it was... By that Norman overlord. Right, exactly. <laughs> By the French-speaking nobility, it was uh, it was French. But while it was out there and muddy and gross in the field where the peasants had to deal with it, it was a pig. Um, and, and so, so this blending why... of language, this French, Norman French and English, blends, and we have Middle English, on that April, with the Shuri Sutta, the drought of March hath pierced it to the Ruta, and bathed every vein in switch liqueur of which virtue engendered is the fluid. Anyone recognize that? Canterbury Tales. It starts to be more recognizable, about 300 years have passed. A few more hundred years, and then we have to be or not to be, that is the question. Modern English used by Shakespeare. But those, but those Norman elites that came over, when William brought over, he brought basically what we would call today a combined arms force. Yes. The Saxons, the Norwegians, they're infantry. They fight on foot, they have their shields. There might be some archers interspersed, but not many. William has archers, he has infantry, and he has the elite of the Norman fighting force, the cavalry. Everyone know what cavalry is? They fight on horseback. They don't ride there and get off, they're on the horses. Okay, that's one reason this type of shield develops. If I'm sitting on a horse, it covers my left side, leaving my right one open for the weapon. So I'm defended more readily. Um, you notice that my spear is much longer than theirs. When I'm on the horse, I'm gonna be able to reach out and touch somebody. Get those guys in there so I can stab. The, the tapestry shows stabbing, but it also shows a totally new version, which is couching. When I run my horse and I couch this lance, every bit of force from the horse through my body, through my arm, goes into the tip of that spear. And whatever I aim it at, it's going to go through. The Norman Knights, these horses are incredibly expensive. They're well-bred, they're extensively trained. They're, some of you may have noticed on the tapestry that they're all stallions. That means they're boy horses. <laughs> it's very obvious on the tapestry that they're boy horses. They're aggressive. They're combative. Even though they're well trained, they need to be controlled, which is why you see the Normans with these great big spurs. This is not a gross overestimation. These are like two inch pointed brass arrowheads. You don't gouge those into the side of the horse because it's an expensive thing, but you've got to get it to do what it needs to do. Any of you out there ever ridden stallion? <laughs> 